heaven a place a city a home by edward mckendry bounds chapter 2 heaven a city episode 2 if contentment were here heaven were not heaven i wonder that ever a child of god should have a sad heart considering what his lord is preparing for him i know not a thing worth the buying but heaven samuel rotherford the city is of heavenly and divine birth shaped and built by god in heavenly mold with heavenly air about her the heavenly life will come from god directly and will be heavenly not earthly many earthly things by chance by happenings and of direct purpose and appointment shape our earthly lives but in a direct and most evident and all inclusive way our heavenly lives will be from god and the air and conditions of heaven will shape them earth will not be forgotten but the former things will scarcely be remembered no will the things of old be considered but crowded out overwhelmed and retired by the magnificent grandeur ever new and expanding glories of the present earth will be too little its most sacred relations its most pleasing things all too poor to come into mind in heaven and i john saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down from god out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and god himself shall be with them and be their god and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold i make all things new revelation 21 to 5 a transfigured mind and memory a purified thought and love transfigured body shining like a sun in noonday splendor shining like a sun in noonday splendor which has no eclipse and fears no night a transfigured heaven and earth this will be the saints eternal inheritance god's power and glory making all things new a bride adorned for her husband the marriage hour the bridal array one and all are emblems of the beauty of the heavenly life the marriage of heaven and earth on their festal day heaven the place of perfect beauty perfect taste perfect joy the bridal life and all that life this be heaven's honeymoon the tabernacle has reference to the place where god dwells and manifested himself to moses god will be essentially and immediately present with man in the heavenly world god shall be with them in essence in which he is not with them in this life they will draw their being and their blessing directly from him without the aid of intermediaries and i saw no temple therein for the lord god almighty and the lamb are the temple of it and the city had no need of the sun 
neither of the moon to shine in it but the glory of god did lighten it and the lamp is the light thereof and again it is said and they need no candle neither light of the sun but the lord god giveth them light in this life we cannot understand this secondary causes are the agencies through which god ministers to us in this world in that higher life these agencies will not intervene and hide god but with open vision face to face we shall see him no temple there no gorgeous temple service no brilliant sun to shine no simpler service will be there the glory of god brighter than the light of a thousand suns will be our light and the mild sweet rays from the lamb will cast their radiance over all the land dispelling darkness and gloom and sorrow for there shall be no more night there for there shall be no night there for there shall be no night there and to make it strong and clear it is declared the second time and there shall be no night there in heaven no tears will be shed for god will wipe all tears from their eyes there shall be no death neither sorrow nor crying nor pain what a changed world how difficult to imagine such a world tears are the sad heritage of this life sorrow and pain flow from a thousand sources and deepen and widen and darken earth's sorrow our sweetest relations give birth to our greatest sorrows our distresses our distresses often flow from our joys our distresses often flow from our joys death reigns all this will be changed and everything which gives pain and sorrow anyway will be forever barred from heaven god will shut it out how bright the eyes undimmed by a tear how strong and free our souls and bodies will be utter and eternal strangers to pain how bright and joyous our hearts with never a cloud never a sorrow how full of richest and largest life untouched by decay unshadowed by death will heaven be all things are to be made new no marks of age no common things no freshened or repainted old th- old things or repainted old things but absolutely new all things will be a new world a new life a new career a new history new environments new conditions new employments new destiny all all things will be new world dreams pictures poetry fiction music all have failed to give the finest idea of that new world and its marvelous life its melody and charms to live there is a rapture ecstasy ineffable and full of glory its climax is he that overcometh shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son it is the wonder and spectacle of angels type and shadow precept and promise both in the old and new testaments are given tokens and seals of the saints inheritance after death no truth is fuller in statement more necessary to man none more in accordance with god's character none more necessary to his glory than the truth and doctrine of heaven an eternal heaven of unsullied purity of unalloyed bliss through its endless years is a doctrine which enables man and honors god the existence of heaven and its matchless perfection is a truth based upon the advent the person and work of jesus christ for he makes heaven 
Christ is the way to heaven. Many are the lessons in the Bible which declare in word, by figure and by picture the fact of heaven. Heaven lies beyond this life. It is located in another world. The boundary line death must be crossed away. Its portals can be entered. Its happy land possessed and enjoyed. Among the many varied illustrations by which the fact and nature of heaven are conveyed to us, that of a city is conspicuous. That of a city is conspicuous. It seems to convey more clearly and fully the idea and characteristic of that unseen and to us unknown land. A city themes with life, a busy life, stirred and life stirring scene is a city. Life in its most opulent and strenuous form. Heaven is a city of life. It has never felt the touch or chill of death. A life unlimited by conditions or time, unrestrained by any of the environments of this earthly life. Graves have never been digged there. Cemeteries are unknown. Tombstones and coffins are alien to that land. A city of life, heaven is. Majestic, glorious life. A life which knows no tears, never felt a sorrow. Eternal, fadeless, decayless life. A city is a picture of closest union. Life there is forced into closest proximity. Unity, compactness, nearness are the essentials to the city life. Heaven is the place of unity, nearness. Earth is broken into discord. Separation is the law of earth. There are no distances in heaven. Oceans and mountains are not. It is called the beloved city. Affection centered there, longings go thither in strong, restless current. Beloved of earth and beloved of heaven. The saintly of earth have turned their feet to heaven and placed their hearts dearest love there. And placed their hearts dearest love there. Angels hold it in tenderest love. Friends are there. In that city, they have found their home. Centuries have come and gone since the tired, tired feet of earth's saintly pilgrims found sweet rest and home in that beloved city. None ever go out of that city. Love holds them. The city of my God, says Christ. The city of the living God. God had prepared for them a city. A city that hath foundations whose maker and builder is God. God has much to do, everything to do with that city. He drew its plans, digged and laid its deep foundations. God built it. God built it. God fitted it. God finished it. God, love, God lives in it. God lives in it. All life is there. All life direct from God. Life in its fullness, vigor, brightness. God is its life. Its maker and builder is God. God is its architect and contractor. No archangels, matchless taste and incomparable genius were used in drafting the plan of this glorious city, this eternal inheritance. God drew the plan. The exhaustless stores of God's own wisdom, his divine skill and Faultless taste brought into perfect perfection the design of that city which was to be the abiding home of his children. Neither were the ability and resources of, a, of an archangel brought into requisition to execute the high and holy design. God was its builder. God was its builder. He only could carry out the original. The God who laid the deep foundations of the world and brought into being and order its mightily framed and mighty moments condescends to enter again into the work of creation and builds a city as the superb home for his elect ones of earth. No night with its darkness rests as a pall on this heavenly city. It is emphatically called the city of the living God. God is more immediately, more personally, more gloriously there than elsewhere.
life is there with god as its immediate source and supply and it is life in its most opulent fullness and redolent of all that is sweet gracious and attractive and free from all that could in any way affect the perfection of its joy or restrain or stint its endless advance glorious city god built glorious inhabitants who can paint its glories who can picture the glories of its blissful inhabitants it would be a little heaven to see the city and get a sight of its ravished and princely citizens it is a walled city for perfection and jeweled are its walls a city was a treasure deposit its walls its security the treasure safe the new jerusalem it is called not only in opposition to and distinction from the old jerusalem but also to designate its freshness forever new never is it to know decay or dullness it is called the heavenly jerusalem to distinguish it from the earthly one and also to emphasize its glories the earthly jerusalem was the center of jewish hopes their hearts were there no song nothing but sadness and exile when away from it their hearts were always trembling to that pole their prayers were made with windows open to jerusalem all this but symbolizes what the heavenly jerusalem should be to us if i forget the o jerusalem let my right hand forget her skill if i do not remember the let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if i prefer not jerusalem above my chief joy heaven ought to be far more to us than jerusalem was to the jew in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven these bible symbols are designed to draw stir and allure and also to instruct us in the nature of heaven so far as earth by language can convey eternal and heavenly things what is heaven by the bible is called a city this is a familiar bible symbol of heaven a city a great city a city that hath foundations the city of the living god it is not by accident that this term is a familiarized and favorite one it is suggestive of heaven's manifold nature out of difference to jewish sanctities and devotion and as a memorial it was called the new jerusalem the jew will find full compensation for the loss of his earthly jerusalem in this new city which will endure eternally without decay of luster renown or glory the term city is a familiar type of the heavenly land and of the heavenly life a city being the center of power and life a great city is heaven all the principles and facts of which the term city is the exponent find their full expression there a jeweled and a golden city express the unsurpassed loveliness and preciousness of that country and its life the jewels are in the foundations of its walls and gold is the substance of which its pavements are made the most costly materials of earth are used for the lowest and most common uses of heaven the most costly materials of earth are used for the lowest and most common uses of heaven and if its most common and meanest things are jeweled and golden we have no figures or values to represent the exceeding richness of its higher things a great city it is god's capital effulgent with all the glory of his presence heaven is called a city in reference to the original meaning of the word city fullness throng heaven will be full an innumerable company which no man can number will gather within its walls not sparsely settled will heaven be its 
thoroughfares will be crowded its golden pavements will be pressed by throngs of enraptured feet the road to heaven is indeed narrow the gate straight and few there be that find it but each community each generation contributes its few who dare to be singular who are brave enough to walk and struggle alone but on through the revolving ages the few precious ones are being housed in heaven until the aggregate will be great if you and i miss that happy land others will shoulder the cross pass out of the popular pleasing wide way and make the solitary journey and take our crown which we have so ignobly and foolishly lost a city is the symbol of life in its magnificence perfections and glory heaven will be the realization of all this doubtless in this figure of a city is found the closeness of the sympathy love and fellowship which will abound there it is called by scripture designation and contrast a continuing city the inconstant ephemeral nature of earth's most substantial and social things is proverbial poverty and fiction speak of it it is part of the sad experience of life and the most cursory observation confirms experience that earth is mutable its fairest flowers fade away and its most precious joys soon wither but heaven is enduring it is not the pilgrims in it is home it abides settled forever a prepared city ready fitted up complete no virgin soil nor virgin forest will salute us there no toil in building homes no taxing labor to build arrange culture will face us but everything ready everything anticipated furnished by a taste and care a knowledge and ability which knows all wants furnishes all comforts supplies all luxuries which stops not at expense a holy city pure unsullied in character nothing which stains nothing impure can gain an entrance there everything is as brilliant as the diamond and as pure it is said to be great in its goodness and light great in its attractive power and great in fame in beauty and in grandeur all about the city is most exquisite in charms most precious in value most costly in richness that it is a holy city is more to our purpose and forever good than its greatness the term holy its origin baffles the critics to define with certainty and clearness it certainly means separated to god devoted to him it it certainly means purity it certainly means purity earthly cities are great but their purity is not infrequently in the inverse ratio to their greatness in heaven greatness is never divorced from goodness not so on earth heaven is a city whose purity clarifies its atmosphere and causes it to sparkle and glitter like crystal a city whose light is in its purity its brightness and permanency an emanation from god and the lamb and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying come hither i will show thee the bride the lamb's wife and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city the holy jerusalem 
descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high. Revelation chapter 21 verses from 9 to 12. It took the light and power of the Spirit and the perspective elevation and sublimity of a mountain top to view this city in its exhaustless magnificence and the dazzling charms of its ever-increasing glory. What grandeur in that vision! The ecstasy of the Spirit, the entrancing city and the inspiration are sublimity of the great and high mountains. All this heightened and made the view ravishing but could transfer but a faint resemblance to the reality. It is a picture of it is a picture of exquisite and fadeless beauty but a picture only. The life, the reality, the substance no inspired trance, no grand and lofty mountain view could portray. She had the glory of God. What is that? Who can tell? God was there, as we have been told. But the glory of God, the brightest, the highest, the greatest display and revelations of God, the most effulgent brightness of his uncreated glory. It is certainly the highest order of brightness, the completed exhibition of highest excellence, the supreme beauty. All comprehensive of all glory is the expression, the glory of God, not simply God, but the preeminent and conspicuous manifestation of all that is glorious, majestic, all glorious in God. The revelation of God is this glory and it forms the light blessedness and splendor of the city. What a land! What a life! Where the glory of God constitutes the loveliness and glory of the land, the opulence and wealth of its life. Her light was like a stone most precious, God's glory, the sun. The light coming from such a sun would dazzle and flame like earth's most costly, beautiful, effulgent and sparkling diamond. The walls and the gates find their expensive significance in Isaiah. The walls and the gates find their expressive significance in Isaiah. Thy walls are salvation and thy gates praise. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundations with sapphires, 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 and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and will make the windows of a gates and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. The walls represent the strength and power of the salvation of the heavenly life. So evident and mighty are the forces of their salvation in heaven that it fills with transporting rapture and goes out with unrestrained, spontaneous and mighty energy. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds, kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four living creatures and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might 
be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Revelation chapter 7 verses from 9 to 12. Revelation chapter 7 verses from 9 to 12. Salvation ought to be much to us on earth in present joy, unspeakable and full of glory, and its most inspiring hope. But much as it is to us, it is much more to them in heaven. We have the nil, they its ocean streams. We have the glitter and mind, mildness of its starlight. They have the sun in his unclouded strength. The wall is great and high, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, and the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass, and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Revelation 21, 14-19 the walls are for protection, the foundations of which are twelve, which indicates their strength, while the jewels represent the beauty and the preciousness of its strength. The heavenly life will be a protected life, walled in by massive strength and jeweled beauty to adorn and enrich. We will be held in heaven. We will go out no more. The motives and influences which hold us to heaven will be strong, but not iron, dull, heavy and strong. Jasper of the walls and all the twelve foundations are gemmed with every variety of precious stones. The forces binding us to heaven will not imprison us but will hold us there by forces as strong as walls of iron and as splendid as jasper as strong as 12 foundations can make it but as rich as vigorous as brightly glorious as the brilliant which emblazon each. The building material of the walls of the city was jasper. We have in the third chapter this description of God. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. How remarkable are the walls of the heavenly city made out of the same material how closely God and his city are allied and unified with this when this same book says when this same book says him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is new Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name Revelation 3 12 the city was pure gold transparent and reflecting every form of beauty far surpassing in richness and purity and value compared to any earthly gold. Its walls are made of jasper, foundations of jewels of every hue and value, gates of pearl, city pure transparent gold. All figures and values and beauty are exhausted in description. What can exceed these? No earthly values of wealth and loveliness. Earthly and angelic vocabularies are exhausted and yet, but the outside is described. What there is of wealth and good inside defies all language to convey all beauty to describe. Diamonds and gold, all jewels are valueless and mean and dull compared to the glorious city, heaven, its life and its purified beings. The employments and engagements inside those gates of pearl, those walls of jasper, 
all these outward adornments so unparalleled in their value and preciousness are indicative in the richness and rareness of the principal joys and pursuits of the heavenly life how godlike are the persons whose stable and precious characters are represented by 12 jeweled foundations what a glorious land whose light and purity glitter like brilliant diamonds whose society is as flawless and pure as transparent gold thy gates praise the gates were places of counsel wisdom adornment and power the gates were of one pearl each there are 12 of them and there are 12 of them of unrivaled beauty constant purity they are for entrances and impress us with the unity purity and worth of all who enter there those holy gates forever bar pollution sin and shame the angels have much to do with the entrance into the heavenly gates and much to do with the stay in there all that is termed kingly all that belongs to honor and glory are in that heavenly city the very pavement trodden under foot lowly and dishonored is made of earth's purest gold which mirror the forms of heavenly saints who walk along its streets the forms are too beautiful to rest their shadows on any substance less precious than gold and that gold refined and polished to its highest perfection and those forms too peerless in beauty not to be reflected and constantly mirrored as they pass along these forms and images of perfect beauty add much to the charms of the city in this world death reigns there life reigns and he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of god and of the lamb in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bore twelve manner of fruit and yielded her fruit every month the leaves of the tree shall be for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse but the throne of god and the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him revelation 22 1 2 3 it will be life in its full vigor like a river deep and exhaustless and wide a river it will be not a branch nor well but a river ever expanding ever moving on it is a river of water all things in heaven will be to refresh and gladden and to give and increase life a powerful river it flows out of the throne of god god's throne is the symbol of god's rule and god's power Heaven will be the place where God's power shall be seen and felt. He will rule with unlimited power and absolute authority, but the issuance will be the river of the water of life, clear as crystal. We are constantly reminded that heaven is all purity. Its life is a river, full charged and strong in current, but transparent, mirroring, mirroring, crystalline in its purity the throne is not separated from the lamb the son of god and his atoning sacrifice unite with the throne to make the full deep current of the heavenly life in the heavenly world through all its happy life with every one of its teeming inhabitants as the source of its most entrancing vision as the school of its prof- profoundest lessons as the school of its profoundest lessons it will always and everywhere and in everything be a lamb as it had been slain forever will the melody of heaven go on and they sung a new song saying Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and we shall reign on the earth and i beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders 
and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing revelation 5 9 to 12 the lamb slain from the foundation of the world every new avenue of delight every new discovery in the heavenly life will be the unfolding of the wonderful mystery illimitable glories and exhaustless power of the lamb the christ crucified as well as the enthroned god everything in heaven will conspire to further the vigor expansion and glory of that life the tree of life ever giving out its fruit with the freshness frequency and energy of monthly crops and the very leaves are health giving and invigorating the curse with its withering and deadening blight All the dire effects of Adam's fall shall be removed. No traces of the first man's blasting steps shall be seen or felt. The cause of earth's groaning and sighing shall be destroyed. Not the power of Adam, nor the dire effects of sin inherited are committed, but the power of God with all its benign and recreating energy and the power of the cross to redeem renew and perfect will be there service of the highest most adoring and enrapturing form will characterize heaven all will be melody and prize with not a discordant note in its melody of god the inhabitants of heaven will have perfect vision that vision will be the melody, the study, and the pursuit of glorified spirits. To know God and to know more and more of Him will be the employment and bliss of heaven. They will be sealed for Him and His name in their foreheads, the seat of intelligence, the sign of ownership, the distinctive mark of loyalty and consecration to God. Without the hands of church or priest of sacrament or ceremony, rite or ritual is placed on them, and they come in person to His person and from him they receive directly all his outlay of treasure each passing moment of the eternal life. All lesser lights are obscured, all intermediaries retired, God and Christ with all the fullness of their divine and eternal affluence are in constant personal contact and outgoing. The light of God's presence hides and disperses all the feeble lights of earth. God shines with ineffable splendor on the glorified ones and all the divine potencies of the cross lift them to royal privileges. They are not only priests but kings to God. Earth has no insight into the exalted glories into which its inhabitants shall be lifted in heaven, no conception of the grandeur to which they shall be exalted, no thought or imagination of the scepter which will be put into the hands of the hairs when their inheritance is received. Thus the vision of Saint John transport and ravish us. Then heaven is the place where our thirstings for him are satisfied and our vision of him is perfect, glorious and ineffable. With what sublime and soothing variety does the bible declare everywhere the ineffable superiority of the heavenly life the heavenly home to this earthly life and to this earthly home heaven robes the saints and transports them with a deathless painless life its length is eternal its conditions are absolute and there is eternal freedom from every form of life and the presence of every form of good and greatness how glorious is this when its truth possesses us and lifts us above the earthly life with its incomparable littleness and its unmeasurable ills. 
द हेवनली होम ए क्राउन ऑफ ग्लोरी ए जॉय अनस्पीकेबल एंड फुल ऑफ ग्लोरी एंड देर शेल बी नो मोर कर्स बट द थ्रोन ऑफ गॉड एंड ऑफ द लैम शेल बी इन इट एंड हिज सर्वेंट्स शेल सर्व हिम एंड दे शेल सी हिज फेस एंड हिज नेम शेल बी इन देर फोर हेड्स एंड देर शेल बी नो नाइट देर एंड दे नीड नो कैंडल neither light of the sun for the lord god giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever revelation 22:3 to 5 we are somewhat aware of the difficulties of interpretation when applied to the revelation of john the diversities and antagonism of construction are almost endless but to whatever school of interpretation the truth may attach one thing is sure that the description of the heavenly jerusalem in its last chapters if it be not primarily the description of heaven it is a pattern of the heavenly after which the earthly is to be shaped as moses tabernacle was the pattern of the heavenly so the literal real heaven the heaven of fact and place and the third heaven where god abides and is seen in his unveiled glory is photographed by john and presented as the model and final results of god's work on earth the tabernacle was only shown to moses in the mount but the pattern of it was shaped by the original in heaven and the jew who studied and followed the pattern understood the principles and substance of the original we study this picture of the heaven need to know what heaven is to that jerusalem above with singing i retire while in the flesh my hope and love my heart and soul are there there my exalted savior stands my merciful high priest and still extends his wounded hands to take me to his breast charles wesley here ends chapter 2 heaven city by edward mckenry bounds praise be to the lord